my name is Marco. I haven't already mentioned that. And um, I organized this event here together with Nick, who is also coming back in a few minutes. And so my focus is really to help people unleash their full potential. Um, well, what actually is an interesting thing is that I met a lot of people who basically have the same goal. They just describe it in a little bit different way. Things like supporting people, finding out what they love to do, or um, find and follow their passion and stuff like that. And the thing is, we also have different ways of how we do that. In my partic uh, particular case, it means that I'm uh, building up an education startup called Inlearnity. Or what is basically, to just describe it quickly, um, a web application to help people learn to code and in the future everything they're interested in. Um, basically using the combination of inspiring learning and doing. So really to make your first really interested about learning to code with um, the science videos and TED Talks and stuff like that. And then giving you um, recommendations of what learning sources you should take a look on that already exist. And giving you personalized recommendations. And then also to engage you to start concrete projects and really learn by doing. And not just saying, hey, learn Python because of learn Python but to learn Python because, hey, this is what awesome stuff you can build, or what other companies are using it for, or what other users are using it for. So, so much about the Illuminati advertising. And <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about where it come from, just quickly. Um, I'm actually from Germany. I uh, hope the accent is not too bad. And uh, from a small city called Leverkusen, that's, I think, the only thing the city's coming for is uh, Bayer, the pharma company, and maybe the soccer team, that's pretty much it. There's not really a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Um, so I actually moved and basically grown up in uh, Düsseldorf and Cologne, so I tried to go a little more into bigger cities, so it's basically, basically in the western part of Germany. Um, what also then lead to the situation that I moved to Berlin. Um, one of the main reasons was to basically um, have better conditions to build up my education startup. And, uh, however, when I got the first time here to the Bay Area, um, I basically started feeling in love with, uh, getting in love with San Francisco and the Bay Area, and honestly start feeling home here, and um, also some other parts of California. Like, yeah, FMY, for example, a really interesting festival, and there are really a lot of awesome people here. Uh, we'll talk about that later again. <laughs> so my key learnings are, let's say, the most important one. Um, I have quite a few of them, and I want to talk about the most important one, uh, most important ones today. So let's start with be how you are, not who, not how others want you to be. Um, so this goes a little bit personal. Uh, later. Um, so actually, when I was in school, elementary school, I was never, I, w I was really quite different. I wasn't really a social person, didn't really have friends, it was more like a purpose group to not be the total outsider, basically. And um, I was really, yeah, afraid, basically, of what other people could might think about me. And it was so extreme, actually, that I was even thinking, okay, do I stand normally, do I walk normally? And um, it was totally distracting, and of course it didn't really support it being more normal, whatever that means, um, but leading to the whole opposite. I did have experience with uh, getting bullied, and, um, and uh, yeah, actually this was going so far that... Um, no, let me... Bad time feeling. Um, this was going actually so far that I also, in combination with that I didn't know what I want to do in my future life, um, developed suicide ideas. Actually, so far that I even went with a knife into school and was in a situation that I thought, okay, you know, continue what you're currently doing or not. And thankfully, I did not, and nobody was harmed. Um, these kind of things do have, of course, a long term impression on you, uh, on, on me personally. And, um, and I really have changed quite a bit since then. By the way, this is the school, not really beautiful, whatever. Um, and uh, it actually did change when I started getting out of school, but also when I started getting in contact with m more people. When I started um, online, I started making new friends, I started meeting new friends, 
And the more I did that, the more I relaxed I also got, the more relaxed I also got. And um, up to the point that now, I actually started get, uh, developing kind of curiosity really to meet new people and get to know them better. And also, um, some level also share my idea and also uh, my perspective and also listen to their perspectives. And um, yeah, so really basically going from an, uh, really a weight introvert to someone who builds up a more self-confidence and um, yeah, uh, but not in an extreme way that I would always love to have me in this kind of situation to present. This is not really a common situation, by the way. Um, <laughs> And when I talk about do uh, be how you are, it also means um, s do maybe crazy stuff. For example, going to a crazy festival of a temporary village underwater with some awesome people, um, or building awesome hardware just because it's fun, like in which case, for example. Um, I mean, we probably have a lot of from yeah, well, parents also things like, come on, please get first a degree or something, do something with value that, you know, for the future. Um, and uh, I wouldn't say that you should always pay attention to that. Um, <laughs> so the second lesson that I made over the last years is work on what you love to do. Um, so it's not, for example, that I, uh, when I was 16, I had the idea of basic, uh, building up a Pokemon game. Um, and uh, I thought, okay, let's build up a world and create this map. And so I started drawing what is actually, for those who know me, looked better interesting because I'm not a fan of paper, really. Uh, but yes, I draw also on paper. Um, and so I started drawing. I thought, okay, I basically had the idea of a story in my mind. And I continued and thought, okay, let's continue with another map and another one and another one. And this it was always what you see here. And then also came into 3D modeling because originally I wanted to do then product designs of phones and stuff like that. And this was really more kind of learning by doing process. I mean, I watched a few video tutorials, um, but most of it was really just clicking around and then being surprised why the computer gets so slowly because I developed a 3D model in a totally inefficient way. Um, you learn from these kind of mistakes. Um, and the thing is, it doesn't have to be perfect when you when you do work on something. I mean, I didn't really have a deep experience in terms of how the internal structure of smartphones is designed. I knew, okay, there's a CPU, there's a GPU, there's memory. So I started drawing how a phone, a really awesome phone could look like. And then also created a 3D model um, of the phone and created a video about that. If you want to take a look on that, you can find it on YouTube. It's a nice example of that I'm not good into audio editing. Uh, it's a nice combination with the Inception soundtrack. <laughs> well, yeah, so, um, and then I also came from product design to web, uh, web design because I wanted to build a portfolio website. And um, yeah, so much about some projects and really doing what you love to do. Um, my mother probably, she didn't really see the purpose in that so much. I don't blame her for that. Um, but yeah, it was a thing that I wanted to do. And the, one of the probably biggest learnings is also, don't be afraid of contacting people. And I'm not just talking about networking or something like that. But also if you see someone and know someone, where you think, okay, this person, uh, if, she would, uh, if he would give me feedback, or she would give you feedback, it would be very valuable for me. Um, um, but it's difficult to reach that person, still try to get in contact with the person. So, for example, uh, when I was working for Asus in the marketing department in Germany, um, I told them I started working on a hardware series, because it's not even difficult enough to build just to build and release just one hardware product. I wanted to build a hardware company with a hardware series, basically, of a computer that you put in your phone and your tablet, and basically having an offline cloud. The thing was that I wanted to get in contact with Steve Wozniak to build up to, let's say, to get finance, get funding. And uh, obviously, it turned out to be a little bit more difficult to get in contact with him. What a surprise. Um, however, I remember at the time I was reading a book, um, an autobiography from him. And there also, uh, he, there was, he was mentioning um, Hartmut Esslinger, a famous product designer who, for example, worked with uh, 
good companies, and also Steve Jobs, for example, on the design of the Macintosh, as far as I remember. Remember, um, and also with Steve Wozniak on his uh, remote control. And um, so I tried to get in contact with help of Esslinger, sent him my business plan. I actually sent the company that he founded my business plan, and asked him, could you please send it to to uh, to uh, yeah, help my Esslinger, the product designer. And it turns out actually they did. And uh, Eslinger, he answered me, very really detailed actually, and I really highly appreciate a lot that he took the time, um, he said, okay, I talked to Wozniak, he would only take a look on that if he would self it would invest in that. So he showed it, uh, the business plan of professional venture capitalist, and of course, the, I mean, the business plan was totally unprofessional, I can now laugh about it, seeing it backwards, but I didn't knew it better at the time. Um, and uh, so, of course, the feedback was destroying things like uh, the credentials as a founder of a multi billion dollar company are not clear, the financial plan is not professional, um, your idea of a Microsoft Zero license is an illusion. Um, <laughs> so, of course, that was positive feedback, but it was still um, awesome that he answered to that. And the thing is, it really made me aware of okay, if you really to want to get in contact with someone, um, even if you think the person is really difficult to reach, um, if you cr be creative, there are pretty much always ways to get in contact with the person. Um, also, there was this nice interview, um, I think we also, uh, Jobs, for example, mentioned that he called uh, uh, Packard, for example, in the past to get some pieces for a computer that he built, and he simply called him. Yeah, there are many examples for that. Um, another example is when I built, for example, um, with a friend of mine, Beyond Ted, uh, basically a website where we had a curated collection of TED Talks and related content to go deep into the topic of a TED Talk. Um, we wanted to publish that with uh, TED and TEDx and we wanted to collaborate with them. So I got in contact with them and it actually turns out not only that I was able to get a ticket off that I already basically stopped sale, but also that I got invited to the speaker dinner and had the opportunity to get in contact with some really awesome people there. For example, also Lauren Lessig, and some other interesting um, people, um, yeah, some awesome speaker. Um, that's not a nice example. However, when working on a lot of different stuff, it uh, can be problematic, or let's say very risky, to lose focus and getting too much distracted. Um, I speak out of experience personally. I spend too much time, for example, on things that turned out to not make a lot of sense. For example, a product management space to work on the education startup, while the irony was actually I was working alone at that time, so it didn't make even less sense, or no sense at all. Um, or building up a product that, a so-called MVP, that has no clear use case and no clear target group, and uh, also an interface didn't really look attractive and understandable. Um, and of course, something I guess everyone here can relate to, um, something, an everyday distraction, or I say an uh, amazing opportunity maker, and at the same time, the biggest distractions, uh, social media. By the way, uh, I mean, I recently got, went to a really interesting kind of workshop. Um, I figured out if you really want to get something done, focus, think about what do you want to do, what do you want to work on, what's currently really important, and not just, yeah, it would be nice to have this, and maybe I should work on this, but what is the really essential stuff? And then take away your phone from your point of view, uh, where you cannot see it, close your positive to social media, and it really makes it way easier to uh, stay focused on working. In my case, that means working on the learning team, um, the online guide to learn to code. So, the next learning that I learned over the last years was be social, open-minded, and positive. What is, you know, I, when I was in school, I was definitely not a social person at all. Um, but it really has changed also because I um, got in contact with some interesting media groups. I started visiting this Behance group, for example, of really creative people doing stuff I have no clue and experience of. Um, cutting drawings out of paper, or you know, making music and stuff like that. And uh, it was really fascinating because these are people who really did what they love to do. Um, and at the same time, I uh, 
And at the same time, it helped me really to get in contact with new people, start yeah, talking with them more and uh, building up social connections. And the more I basically went to this uncomfortable situation, because damn it, I don't know anyone here, and of course that's not a really comfortable situation, but the more I get, got into that, uh, the more relaxed I also got in talking to new people, up to the point that I now found it really fascinating and interesting um, to get in contact with new people and talk about and listen to their background story and also talk with them honestly. And um, yeah. And also, I met a lot of people who really um, made me aware of the importance of really thinking positive. However, that doesn't mean say, okay, everything is beautiful, there are no problems in the world, so we just ignore them. No, this is not what I'm talking about. So the thing is, we need to be aware, of course, of the problems going on in the world, and uh, not living in this kind of Disney land, everything is wonderful area, or, well, also some areas here in the Bay Area could easily make you forget about uh, that uh, world around you and the rest of the United States and around the world does not look like the area where you live and they actually do have some problem, big problems. I don't want to talk, talk, uh, start the topic of politics here right now, but I guess a lot of people here know what I'm talking about. I mean, there are a lot of problems. So the thing is, see them not as, oh, damn it, I cannot change anything about it because it seems to be so unsolvable. Um, but see them as a uh, challenge you can solve. Maybe not alone, but with other people together. And it always starts with some people. Um, yeah, start doing something. The next learning uh, was really get out of your home. Okay, this sounds a little bit weird, maybe. The thing is that um, I started traveling more and more over the last years and uh, got in contact from people not only from different countries in, in, in Europe, but also in the US, here in the West Coast and East Coast, and also uh, it turns out uh, getting the opportunity to travel to China, to Beijing. Um, and uh, I really, it, it's really valuable because it can really extend your point of view. Um, you can make friends all over the world, and uh, you never know what turns out to happen. For example, I didn't expect that, that a friend uh, here in San Francisco um, uh, would introduce me to a professor at, uh, at the Be um, Tsinghua University in Beijing and um, giving me the opportunity um, to be there at an event as a speaker. So a lot of, very often these things doesn't happen predictable. Um, yeah. And also something that's, I guess, very a little typical for me is be minimal and be flexible. Um, I really started taking a lot of my stuff out of my apartment, basically reduced everything to let it fit inside this cabinet, and then actually even went further, and now I basically travel with just a, a travel bag and this bag to get you can see under the table, uh, under the desk, and uh, that's pretty much it. So the thing is it also really helps you not only to be flexible when it comes to traveling, but it also takes away a lot of distraction. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of time you can spend with your apartment and stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, taking risks. Um, When I was studying um, in Germany, in, well, in the sort of um, economics and electrical engineering, doesn't really, I didn't really learn that much in terms of from the, the field, but it, I learned a lot when it comes to the education system. Because it was actually the first time I started thinking about the education system more critical, realizing that this focus on just preparing for tests and uh, don't really having the time for um, going deeper into topics and developing concrete ideas and projects um, because you just are focused basically on preparing for this test. Um, it really made me think about, okay, I need to decide, do I continue want to focus on the test or instead work on my own projects named Inlearnity, the education startup, and actually around that time also um, a movie script that I started working on. Um, that turns out to be too expensive to realize at the moment. <laughs> Maybe later. Um, yeah, so I decided to um, focus on my on my own on my projects. So I started visiting only the lectures I was interested in again, uh, all I was interested again, interested in, and it was definitely one of the best decisions I ever did, ever made. 
However, also I knew it has the consequence that after a special time, I do not get student support money anymore from the government. So I need to take, I need to figure out how to continue pay the bills. Because after all, I still had an apartment and of course other costs of living. So uh, it turns out that I then started working uh, for a digital agency in Cologne. What was on the one side kind of interesting, on the other side, it was really frustrating. First of all, because there was a lot of hierarchy going on, I didn't really have a lot of creative room, but mainly because I already knew what I want to work on in Learnity. And if you work full time for another company, obviously you have way less time doing your own stuff and leading to way more frustration, way less progress. And so I knew when there was this feedback speech, uh, re uh, feedback conversation after four months, I knew I'm gonna quit or they're gonna quit me. I will not continue work there. I want, um, Ironically, we have been totally the same opinion. They thought I do not fit in there, I thought I do not fit in there, so it worked all fine. And um, yeah, then I moved to Berlin, because I thought this is the best place to be in Germany to build up a startup. What well, is still my opinion, but also I realized that it's, there's still a huge difference between Berlin and the Bay Area. So, and also in Berlin, I start, uh, near Fossi had the situation I need to work for another, or let's say I saw it, it's the most obvious thing to work for another company to pay the bills. So I did that and worked for a startup, um, but this time as the UI UX designer, so responsible for the redesign of their product, and not just being a small part of the company. Um, and then unexpectedly they fired me. What turns out to be one of the best things that could happen to me. Because, <laughs> because then I was thinking again, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm now looking again for a full-time job, knowing that if I work for another company again, I will be really frustrated again very fast. So I searched for alternative ways on um, being able to work completely on Learnity while being able to pay the bills. And uh, well, I found a solution um, with the combination of uh, let's say um, that the uh, combination of unemployment money and Airbnb. Uh, not enough money to have a lot of flexibility, but enough to basically pay the basic bills. And to being completely focused on working on Learnty, what is also supported by the government in this case. One of the, yeah, the best situations I can remember when it comes to taking risks was, um, I met online someone where I noticed we have a lot of things in common, Christopher. And uh, he also started a startup a few years ago, now working in politics and uh, uh, is doing awesome stuff. And he mentioned he's gonna travel to San Francisco in a few days. We haven't met up to that point, and I thought, well, it would be awesome to travel together. And uh, so I spent to look for flights. And so I decided to leave a team of, I mean, two friends I was working with on an app in Germany leaving them instead of being a co-founder there, instead spending the money for a flight to stay with someone I never met before in a country where I've never been, at places where we didn't even know where exactly we were gonna stay for the whole time period. And funny thing, by the way, the first time we actually met, we couldn't get done to meet in Berlin, where we both lived, but actually we met the first time at San Francisco airport. The first thing I said to him was, hmm, you look different compared to the pictures. But it was not meant to be negative. <laughs> <laughs> We just thought, oh damn, if this is how it starts. Um, <laughs> but it turns out to be the best trip of my life up to that point. Um, he already has been to San Francisco seven, eight, whatever times. He loves the city. He wanted to move here since years. He introduced me to so many interesting people and um, showed me so many interesting places. And I just had actually so um, a positive, inspiring impact on me that I thought, okay, um, I should go here, need to go here for a longer time period to push myself, make bigger progress with my education startup. So I decided to travel with basically no savings to the Bay Area for nearly three months, um, knowing that, okay, um, I do not have the money to uh, pay a hotel or an apartment for all that time. And while I did have some income, this, well, wouldn't fit that. So maybe some of you may ask, you know, okay, how did you figure out staying um, in the Bay Area, one of the, well, I would say most expensive areas in the world? Um, so the thing is, uh, I knew, okay, um, uh, I focused on staying with friends and using couch surfing. 
And this was, in multiple ways, an amazing opportunity. Um, both for um, meeting awesome new people, both for getting closer with existing friends, for making, uh, it's the best networking opportunity, honestly. Um, better than most meetups, I would say, I would guess. And also, the um, positive side effect was that I explored a lot of different areas um, in, in the Bay Area. More, I explored more places and met more awesome people in these three months than I met in the months before that in Berlin. Um, so, and this wouldn't have been possible um, with some really amazing friends. What I'm, what I'm so thankful of. And um, uh, to meet them and, uh, yeah, let them, and, that I got introduced and we uh, also taught other, friend, other people who then also, be, then also became friends and you know most of these connections they didn't happen because you could predict them but um, yeah because going out of the, out of your home getting start talking to people and um, yeah and then there was this especially is especially one person that would love to be here today but um, he cannot be here today because he is in Berlin, Christopher. So the thing is actually when we um, all, we basically spend three weeks together, um, get to know each other way better, speaking extremely openly and honestly about um, also very personal stuff. And well, yeah, this was also the start of our relationship. And um, he's definitely by far the most inspiring and um, open-minded person I met and uh, extremely supportive. And uh, I can really just highly recommend you if you have a, um, your life partner try to spot each other also in terms of saying, okay, well, what is currently going on? And uh, basically building a kind of two people mastermind group. Or, <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I'm really thankful, thankful for, for knowing them. And uh, yeah, happened unexpectedly. Like I think most things in life, most of things. And push yourself, uh, push each other forward. Um, one of the, also one of the unexpected things that happened to me was I got in contact with a mastermind group, um, a group of people who had uh, a common goal basically to support each other, reaching their burning desire. Um, and while I do not totally agree with uh, the focus of some of the people, it was, this may be a little more too related to money, I found it by far the most inspiring and positive thinking group I ever met, ever met. And it made me aware of the importance of having people around you. It doesn't have to be this kind of mastermind group. But having people around you to talk on a regular base, honestly, okay, what's, what's your current goal? What do you want to reach? And how to get there and feed, uh, support each other by making new connections and giving feedback and stuff like that. And um, surround yourself also with positive thinking people. But on the other side, also means if you have if you have contact to if you have a lot of negative thinking people around you and people who don't really uh, agree with the way you go, um, you should might think about maybe spending less time with people who think they're basically stopping you or they're really making you more frustrated. Even while this might mean that good old friends who are really negative thinking or maybe family members who do not agree with your way at all, um, having less contact to them. Um, well, I mean, I did have experience of that personally uh, in terms of my family, um, but maybe I can talk about this more in a, when I have a little bit more time another time. And uh, yeah. Well, but one of the last very important lessons, start making, not just planning. I really spend a lot of time, too much time, with also planning something because, I mean, especially in Germany, I have the feeling it's this kind of stereotype that, okay, if you build a business plan and you plan everything in detail, then everything will be, will work fine. I like the sentence, uh, no business plan survives contact with first customer. Because I think, I mean, it doesn't mean that planning is not important. It definitely has an important part. However, um, it's important to not have it as an excuse, basically, to, to, to not do something. Um, so start doing something, start creating something concrete after planning a little bit, but not start into planning only. And also, 
they find some time every day, for example, to really relax a little bit, meditate, for example, to really find time not just being always in this everyday working stress, um, but also think about um, where you are currently. Are you currently going in the right direction? Um, something that was really important for me as well. And uh, there are some apps, Calm and Headspace are just two of them that can be really helpful, even if it's just 10 minutes a day, to really yeah, also have getting the most creative and best ideas. Um, yeah, while finding some time. And last but not least, um, be honest and open to each other. And uh, I really realized that when you talk really openly and honestly, even about personal things, things that you usually would only tell maybe to really good friends because they maybe go deep with you. Um, if you do that, it can create a really, I mean, first of all, you get way more positive response than you would expect. This is what I experienced. And also, it can help really to make a really strong connection to another person, um, both for friendship, for relationship, or also for business connect for working connections with other people. So, and this is also uh, um, especially, yeah, when it comes to the next speakers, Mitch and Danielle, um, really sp speak, uh, I can just engage you to also speak honestly about even things you might feel uh, go a little bit deeper. Um, because when talking really uh, about these kind of uh, things, um, it can also help the other person a lot. And um, yeah, so much about me, um, about my story. Thank you very much. Not only are there any questions, but also is there something you are particularly interested in learning more about? Uh, I'm also curious about your opinions. So, yeah. Opinion. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing your, your life story. It's difficult to talk about your life, especially the tough parts. So I commend you for that. And question. Following up my opinion, what did you do during your darkest hours. We all have our darkest hours when we feel we cannot go on. What were the things that made you push forward? I mean, part of it is probably talking to some really good friends, um, if I have them, and really talk openly about how you actually currently feel and what you currently think. But also, um, really, as difficult as it might sound in a situation, try to reflect more from a distant, neutral perspective. And realizing, for example, I, I mean, I started realizing that when um, I was really afraid of other people's reaction and stuff like that, um, this is crazy. I spend so much time and energy with that, and it doesn't help you at all. It just makes it worse. So I basically, if you have this ground mentality, uh, it definitely helps a lot to got, get out of that, um, together with the support of friends, by talking on, open and honestly with them. Um, yeah, can really help, I think. Um, and this is what was for me. Um, yeah, I do not think very often about these really dark moments, but yeah, um, when, I mean, I basically is, yeah, stop thinking about a lot of stuff letting it behind me, but still having in mind in terms of it shape me, but mm -hmm. focusing on the, on the future and, yeah, how it gets better. Um, yeah, Should I explain a little bit? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, at the one of the slides that uh, like negative, uh, negative energy, negative kind of um, and you kind of touched upon like family dynamics a little bit. Can you elaborate a little bit more and say how I mean, um, how can you gauge that, especially if it's someone that's really kind of like your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister, and even if they're bringing in, mean, if something tragic does happen in a car accident or something like that, is there a feeling of, of you know, guilty, or do you just continue moving forward with, with positive people in your life? And how, I mean, have, have you ever thought about that, or have you ever had to deal with anything like that? 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, um, I don't want to get misinterpreted in terms of basically totally disconnect you from other people who do not fit in your positive way of thinking or something. That's not a good idea. Generally, completely disconnecting um, from people um, that do not fit inside your bubble basically is not a good idea because it makes you, um, yeah, not aware of also their perspective as well. Uh, when it comes to my family, I, I mean, when I moved out, um, I have to say that I didn't have the best time, um, the best contact with my uh, mother specifically. Um, I do not blame her for that. I mean, I wouldn't say that she was a bad mother or something. It was simply that we didn't have that, we haven't seen that often each other. And um, when she then came basically home, she tried to interpret from what she saw of how my life is currently going on. And then, of course, it easily happened that she was really misinterpreting something. And there also have been situations where she, um, think, where she was thinking, she's basically helping me, uh, saying, okay, uh, pay attention to that and try to find a job, uh, uh, a place to study and a home and something like that. But communicate in a way that made me more feel like, okay, I promise you, you will not find a place to stay. I promise you, you will not find a job. And this is not really motivating, but demotivating. And so I started getting more disconnected from her after now actually getting more, dis more connected with her. But, um, so yeah, um, just have it in mind in terms of do not completely disconnect from these people, but uh, um, spend more time with people who are really, who give you energy and who you can support instead of people who really only takes away energy, basically. Um, I think that's important, um, especially when you notice, okay, this person not taking away really, really too much energy, then thinking about, okay, maybe not completely cancel the contact, but at least yeah, meeting more. Oh, yeah, like, one last question, maybe? Yeah. Um, since uh, the, the topic of this talk is about finding uh, what you love and, and doing it, I have to ask you um, do you love what you do? <laughs> <laughs> totally. The thing is, uh, it was actually, it's ironic because I never expected it could be education. I mean, in the past, it was, ju was just like, yeah school, that's the way it is. Um, I never thought about that before and before I really started studying and then started thinking more critical about it. Um, and then also realized, wait, with the possibilities of the internet and the existing huge diversity of learning sources, we do have now the opportunities to really make learning accessible for everyone. Um, if, we do, uh, if we really make them available on one website and if we really make it extremely easy, to access existing learning sources, both online and event and stuff like that. And the more I realized that, the more I get excited I got really into that topic. Not just saying, ah, damn it, this seems to be a problem that's unsolvable, but wait, this is actually solvable. While the movie script, for example, I said, okay, uh, this takes a few million dollars, I don't have any connections into that industry, and so probably not a good idea to make it at the moment. But yeah. Um, are, you, are you more motivated by the potential vision or by like the, the process? Um, but a vision to help people, um, supporting them, and really realize when people start exper uh, finding out what they um, what, uh, what they really love to do, if they really start develop, um, ex finding that out and f start focusing on that, uh, when the spark is basically starting, this is what really is exciting me, uh, excites me. Um, so yeah, that's. <laughs> well, we can of course uh, also talk about this later, and uh, yeah. So um, now.